This is Mayor Robert Sullivan, and uh, today is our 20th episode of Our Brockton, and we're in a different venue today. We're not at uh, Community Access, although Community Access, our partners are filming this today. We're in the ROM Little Theater here at Brockton High School, and I'm joined by a three-time guest of the Our Brockton Show, Superintendent Mike Thomas. Hey, Mike. Thank you, Mayor. Oh, Appreciate thanks for being here. Yeah, no, time. this is great. And, uh, I was invited back. <laughs> absolutely. You made the cut. But uh, no, so seriously, uh, we're in the Little Theater. We have a school committee meeting again tonight. Uh, as, as mayor, I chair the school committee, and, and Mike is superintendent, and our seven great elected school committee members will be here. This is where we do our business on behalf of the Brockton Public Schools. So, so Mike, uh, first of all, since we've last met, um, we were able to pivot because COVID, the numbers started to really trend in the right direction. And so we were able to get out of the remote program, right? Yep. Um, and we were able to go in full. Um, how, how did it pan out? I think it went really well, very well. Great. Um, you know, first we were able to get our elementary and middle school kids back full first. Yep. Um, it, we still allowed, as the state allowed, um, parents who didn't feel comfortable were able to choose the full stay with the full remote. Um, and our teachers did a fantastic job. Most school systems, when a student chose to go fully remote, they pretty much did not get any live teaching. They went right to a um, one of those um, online programs uh, with a taped teacher, like it's called Edgenuity or Fuel. Uh, our teachers, right from the start, um, live streamed. Um, they live streamed, and they were teaching students in front of them and students at home, which is probably the most difficult ever to teach that way. Uh, and they continued to do that even when we were full. So I went into some classrooms and teachers had 24, 25, 26 kids and they had two or three at home and they were teaching to both. Uh, I remember when you and tough. I we went to yeah, Keith Center, went to Brockton High, we went to South Middle School. I mean, it's a di they had a lot on their plate this oh, year. Oh, a ton. And they um, did a tremendous job. Exceptional, right? The yep. staff, the teachers, the boys and girls, the guardians at home that were helping. Um, and also our custodians and our facilities. Oh, yeah. You know, our schools, uh, first of all, we have a lot of schools in the yep. city of Brockton, but they are being disinfected and cleaned, and, and everything was, was really great. I want to thank you for your leadership um, because once we were able to get back, um, we did another really remarkable thing. Now, last year we did kind of a, we did a graduation at Marciano, yeah. right? Um, but we had to break it up, um, you know, and it was, it was uh, hot, hot days. <laughs> But Brockton High graduation and, um, you know, the Keith Center, uh, all the different graduations. Can you tell the audience how it, first of all, how it was planned and then how it was su successful it really was? So we had the Keith and the Huntington School, uh, both of those schools, they went um, Friday night. Yep. Um, it was supposed to be outside, but um, their graduate, graduation classes are much smaller, so we were able to pivot because that afternoon even we had thunder showers and it poured, and we were able to switch right inside. It actually was a great sound. It was awesome. You know, it was a quick switch. Within an hour, we were able to switch inside, and we had plenty of room. Um, we had plenty of room for guests, and it was just, it was just a great night. Uh, it was great to see those kids watch, walk across the stage. And then Saturday, it continued, and we got back to, again, we still kept it. We couldn't go back to the full right away because, you know, the stands get packed. We usually get about 15,000 yep. for graduation pre-COVID. So um, we felt instead of limiting tickets, limited tickets for um, parents, we were able to open it up and allow them unlimited tickets. That's why we kept it two buildings in the morning, two buildings in the afternoon. And I think we looked around at the stands. There had to be at least 6,000, 7,000 yeah, people at packed. each one. So, yeah. um, And just, again, we still... We're, in, we're not at the end of COVID, so um, I'm sure next year we can get back to a full-scale, regular, all four buildings graduating at the same time. But this, this year compared to last year was night and day. And you gave an awesome speech. And, and one of the, 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 the quotes you gave um, for the late marvelous Marvin Hagler, um, I know I'm not going to put you on the spot because you don't have it memorized, <laughs> but in essence, what was the tone? What was the whole gist of that quote? Just about if, you, if you, when you're going to get knocked down so many times in life, and it's who gets up is the real champion who continues to get up is the real champion and these this is what these kids have done yeah. you know we were talking to a senior class who lost so much yep. um they lost the whole end of their junior class and they weren't ever able to play any of the spring sports or have any of the spring activities the musical nothing last year they weren't able to have a junior prom yep. uh, and they just lost a ton and then and then obviously going fully remote up all the way from september to march yep. You know, they're not in school with their friends doing the things that uh, 
high school kids enjoy to do. Uh, luckily, they were able to play sports, which I am grateful for the school committee and you, Mayor, for always allowing them to play sports, even when we were fully remote. Uh, and then all the actors they were able to do the musical. Oh, wasn't that awesome? Yeah, it was great. I know you were here, great. the outdoor musical outside. Oh, it was tremendous. Yeah, yeah and, and we in the school committee made sure there was money in the budget because all of these activities were expensive but well worth it and we we and, and the kids deserved every bit of it and it was so good to be able to get them back to school full time oh. when we got into april and um you know and even here at brockton high it went well we were a little worried yep. we put in for the waiver um and worried about a school of four thousand um, but several kids did did stay remote yep. um, so we were able to get through and, and we had a good spring and early summer and you know it was in it was good because the kids they get out early they get out yes, the earliest did. we've ever got out uh, yeah. on the 16th so they can now enjoy their summer but giving them a graduation that we were able they were able to march out they were able to have as many guests as, as they wanted and it was fantastic and that was the best part it was, it was awesome and, and I want to thank Dr. Cliff Murray here Principal Brockton yep. High and um, you know, we talked about Marvis Marvin Hagler, and I want to thank you and Jamie Domestico and Jim Cobbs and Ken Thompson and your whole team facilities because we had a wonderful ceremony at Marciano Stadium. You were there um, to honor Marvis Marvin Hagler. That was just a wonderful was community crazy. event, wasn't it? Oh, it was tremendous. It was event. awesome. Yeah, and I, like you, grew up. That was, a, yeah. that was my junior high and high school years was right. watching Marvin as champ when I was... 13 all the way till I was 18. Was, that was the best years. Best watching middleweight Marcus. fighter of all time, oh, in yeah. my humble opinion. Oh, yeah. And he did beat Sugar Ray. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so if we, if we pivot a little bit, um, because COVID is, you know, we're in the green, right? But if COVID is still around. Um, it still is. And we have lost, unfortunately, 434 residents. Um, one thing that you and I and the school committee and the city council and our state delegation all agree on is we want to have a healthy, safe community. So I want to applaud you and Dr. Linda Cahill, who heads up our school nursing. Um, and again, the team on the school side and city side with Eno Montessori and the Board of Health because the synergy was there, right, working together. Um, one thing that we were able to do is we were able to do a vaccine clinic here at Brockton High School, right, um, yeah. in the red uh, the cafeteria, red. and the IRC was the observation. And then also we did it at the middle schools, and we did over 800 kids that rolled up their sleeves, took the shot, saved their lives, do you mind? Because it never happened in the Commonwealth. Nope. Brockton, again, we were ahead of the curve. No public school, high school or middle school uh, had done the clinic until we did. What were your thoughts on that, Mike? Just amazing. Um, and, and I'll even go back even further that we were the first ones to do it for our staff. Yes. So yes. With, yes. thanks, for, the uh, thanks yeah. to you uh, and Sue Joss at the... Um, at the Neighborhood Health Center, um, them being a federal site, we didn't have to wait for the governor to make, as soon as Joe Biden made teachers eligible, which I think was a couple of weeks before yes. the state did. Yep. Um, Sue said, Mike, you know, can we Let's set go. up a, right. a clinic? A th so we worked on a three-day clinic for our staff. That was back uh, mid-March. Yes, it was. Um, so we were able to do every, and it was all staff members, not just teachers. It was all 3,000 staff Everybody. members were eligible. Um, and that was just great. And knowing that we were coming back to school and, uh, and then the clinics here, the one for the high, at the high school and then the one at each of the seven middle schools uh, to get that many kids vaccinated and uh, the parents were cooperate, you know, cooperated and just filled out all the paperwork. It is a lot of paperwork. Oh, yeah. Um, and again, it's just about keeping pe people healthy and safe and, um, and, and parents that chose to have their children yeah. vaccinated had every opportunity to do that. Through, and the parents could get the, the shots too. And I mean, it was a win-win. Yeah, you know? actually we had, I think, uh, out of that 800, I think maybe 150 were adults that yeah. were either um, guardians or parents. And I know Chartwells has been a wonderful partner. Oh, right? yeah. they, uh, they provide our food, Brockton Public Schools and the parochial school. They, they just do a great job, right? Tom Burke's awesome. Yep. Um, we have been able to get food every day at the Shaw Center, you know, to, to, to feed the National Guard and the, the dedicated clinicians over there. But one little neat thing that we did is that every boy and girl that got the shot, the second shot last Monday and Tuesday, got an individually wrapped cookie from Chartwell. And also, we bought 800 gift cards so that each one could go to Dairy Queen and get an ice cream or a blizzard. It was just something nice oh, to do, great. right? It was just something cool. Oh, yeah. You and I didn't get the blizzards, oh, no, but I'm no, a big no, no. Guy too. <laughs> I am too. <laughs> um, but you know, I think I think one thing that um, you know, my whole purpose of this um, you know episode is to educate and inform, right? And so, one thing I know that we've done here in the school committee and. Uh, Jess Hodges from your team and Brockton Public Schools and Soraya DeBarros and Community Schools is what are some of the summer offerings right now for our boys and girls here in the city of Brockton? So we have um, over 40 
offerings for summer programs. We have enrichment, which is um, sports programs, obviously, um, and other fun camps that we have. Um, but all our academic programs that are going on, they're all free. Yep. They're all free this year um, for any parent that feels that the COVID slide and it affected everyone. Yep. Um, and because obviously learning remotely is not the same as learning in person. So we know there's been some learning loss. So we wanted to make sure we had plenty of programs pre-K to 12 um, for students entering 12th grade. So um, online, um, you can go on BrocktonCommunitySchools.com and see all the programs, or you can just call the community schools office at uh, 5, 580 7595, uh, and you will get all the information. Again, all academic programs are free of charge. There's no fee for any of those programs. Uh, and again, it's for every level there's That's STEM awesome. camps, science camps, there's uh, writing camps, there's um, a, a rising uh, first graders program for, um, for uh, parents who feel their kindergarten students that were in kindergarten this year need a little bit more before they go into first grade. There's programs to, for second through thir second through fourth, and then fifth and up. So every grade has a program, academic program. It's fantastic. So I hope everybody takes advantage. No, of and, it. I, and I would encourage uh, anybody watching. Um, you could always go on the city of Brockton, uh, Brockton.ma.us uh, website as well. Or what Mike said, community schools. We could call the mayor's office, or the superintendent's office, at all. Um, some of the old time uh, uh, programs, you know, the Raise Up Basketball yeah. Camp, um, Act One, Scene One. Some of the oldies, but goodies are still going. being. Yeah, yeah, they're all get being, ready. Yeah, get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Yeah, what you and I did back yeah. in the day, you know. <laughs> Um, you know, one, one other thing I mean, is to stress that it's free, right? And, Absolutely. And, and so being mayor, I also chair the Bat Bus. Um, so I had done an initiative, Mike. Uh, it's called Open for Brockton Initiative, Open for Business, try to get more businesses going. And um, I asked the Bat Bus if in this summer on the weekend, Saturday and Sunday, if they would not charge any fee, and they agreed. Wow. So Bat Buses are free in the city of Brockton, um, uh, Saturday and Sunday, all summer long. That's the great. programs Mike just talked about are free as well. So. Um, I want to just thank you, Mike, for your friendship, for your dedication to the boys and girls and to the teachers and staff, right? Um, you're a Brocktonian, you know, no, no doubt about that. Um, believe it or not, we're coming up to the end here. Any, any last thoughts on anything at all? No, I just want to thank you, Mayor, for our partnership and friendship, and this was needed more than ever um, for all of us to work together, um, me, you, the city council, the school committee. Um, we would have never got through this if it wasn't for the teamwork of all the elected officials in our state delegation as well for their support. And then again, the, the, the students and staff of, of the Brockton Public Schools for, for what they had to deal with all year long. Um, and they really came through. Uh, and for the parents for supporting us, because I know it wasn't easy for them, uh, especially when we were fully remote from September to March. And, you know, they had to find daycare, and it was yeah. a very difficult for them, and some work in two and three jobs. So I really want to thank the parents for their patience and understanding and always their support of the Brockton Public Schools. Yeah, no, thanks, Mike. And, and one last thing is is the city budget has been passed on the city side and school side. I want to thank the city council, right? You and, my, you and me... Uh, Aldo Petronio from the school side, Troy Claxon uh, on the city side, the CFO uh, on both sides. You know, we worked literally for months on this, and we presented it. The city council approved it, thanks to the school committee who recommended it as well. One last thing before we conclude, Student Opportunity Act, what does that mean to you? Uh, $22 million there more. There you go. <laughs> $22 million is the game changer, yeah. long overdue. No more layoffs, extra staff, and uh, several, several hundreds of thousands for extra programs for kids. And one position, and she came here at the last school committee meeting, is an important historic position that was just hired here. What is that all about, that historic position? Um, so Renee Haywood yep. is our new executive director of diversity, um, equity, diversity, and inclusion. Um, that's a new office that we've developed with the support of you and the school committee. Uh, and Renee's going to do a great job. She went through a very rigorous um, interview process that included parents, teachers, our community partners, um, administrators in the Brockton Public Schools, school committee members. Um, and she was great. She came out of a, a very long interview process, and uh, she's going to do a great job. Oh, she hit and, the ground running. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, she's already visited all the schools. Yeah, she you know? visited all the schools. She and she just started on June first. Yeah, that's awesome. No, she's a great hire. Again, I want to thank you for your friendship and your leadership. Uh, thank you for joining. You're the third third time on the show. Uh, you know, three's a charm. Um, I want to thank you all for watching the 20th episode of Our Brock. And again, I want to thank Brock to Community Access for uh, allowing us to go remote today here in the George Rom Little Theater at Brockton High School. Uh, we will uh, be doing another episode in the near future at another location outside of BCA. But again, it is an honor and privilege to serve as the mayor of the city of Brockton. Thank you for watching. Be safe, be well. We'll see you soon. Thanks again, Superintendent. Thank you.